So on July 9, 2016, Massachusetts passes a transgender uh, rights bill that has now become law. And so this law allows transgender people to use public restrooms and locker rooms that are consistent with their gender identity versus their sex that's identified on their birth certificate. Now, look, there's a lot of pushback on this. Some of it, if not all of it, is happening on a conservative side. But the main argument is that uh, against is that this is a public safety issue, that we have these, quote, men that are going into these women's bathrooms. And that so we're increasing the probability that uh, children will be molested um, and we're increasing the probability that uh, the of the sexual assault of women. Now, look. I'm not going to say anything about this being right or wrong, but what I can say that as a sociologist, uh, part of the problem is that of our gender schema and how in the United States we have a gender schema that only gives us really two options on our gender, on our gender, and then also then rigidly connects those genders to male and female bodies. Now look. One of the ways that we can, uh, that, and that this fight that we're having is actually stopping us from seeing a rather simple solution to this, and that is to have increased uh, more single user bathrooms. Um, not only would this help with transgender issues, but it would also be an equity move for a lot of women uh, who stand at times in possibly long lines in order to use the bathrooms, especially at like sporting events or nightclubs, while men, a lot of times, we don't even have to stand in line at all. Uh, in these same spaces. And so if our society continues to move towards a gender identity that's more fluid, we surely can expect to see uh, more uh, accommodations and more exploration of how this would work better in our society.